Good evening and welcome. My name is Deborah Lane. I am the town clerk. It is my pleasure this evening to welcome you. I'm going to begin our first meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council for the 2010 year. This is Monday, December 14th. Our first order of business will be to administer the oath of the school board, and then that will be followed by the oath for the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. So I'd like to invite uh, the school board members elect to join me in front of the podium. At this point, I'd like to move into the roll call, and then after that, um, if it's okay with the council, we'll move right into item number one, election of the chairman, and then uh, the chairman will continue with the printed agenda. So with that, the roll call, Council swift Kayata Here. Council Gouvernail. Here. Council Jordan. Here. Council Lennon. Here. Councilor Sherman. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. And Councilor Walsh. Here. Great, thank you very much. Item number one is the election of a town council chairman for the count council year 2010. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I move that we elect Ann Swift Kayata as the, our um, council chairman for the next year. We have a motion. Is there a second? I second it. Council Jordan, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries, seven yeas. Congratulations. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, we will continue with the printed agenda. It's time for the pledge. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Town Council reports and correspondence. Does anyone have anything to report? Councillor Walsh? Uh, a week and a half ago, I had the privilege to take the uh, Ralph Gould Award to New York City and present that to Michael Ott on behalf of the town. And uh, I would like to express that he was uh, very deeply touched by it, moved by the, the honor that was bestowed upon him by the town. And he wanted to share with all of us back here that he wants to underscore the fact that it was a community effort, and he's very pleased that he led that effort. Very pleased to have Hannaford Field built for future generations to, to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I have one item. Um, the school board's curtailment committee uh, had a public input workshop. Really, it was the school board's workshop, but the curtailment committee worked on the planning for it on December 8th. It was uh, very well attended. There were approximately 90 people there, citizens from uh, all different uh, walks of life and groups in Cape Elizabeth. They worked on ideas to help the school board make decisions on how to deal with fiscal year 10 and fiscal year 11 state curtailments to uh, school revenue, state aid for education revenue. So. Um, they will be continuing with their work, and uh, I know we wish them well in that. Okay, thank you. Now is time for the citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? Mr. Prince, please come forward, state your name and your address. Fred Prince, 2 Rocky Hill Road, Cape Elizabeth. I started this about six months ago and then realized the town's council is going to turn over, so I waste my time. I wait for a new council to come. I'm going to review the first two pages very quickly. First page just says that basically 5% of, uh, 5 of the client, 80% of the client, 50% of the clients are concurred by 5% of the people. Okay? Most of the time, most of the people are healthy. 70% of the money you'll spend in your lifetime on health care is spent on your deathbed. Page two. If you go to a higher deductible and a higher co-insurance, this is an actual case I had, you can cut the cost by 30%. Cape Curry reported the uh, school committee is looking for $600,000. Well, I got $3 million health care uh, benefit. 30% times $3 million is a million. That's 40% of what they need, so they haven't got to cut as much. What I said I was going to talk about the next time was personal arson. And that's what I want to cover today. What is personal arson? This is a term that I coined. Arson is when you burn down your house. And the insurance company says, sorry, we're not going to pay you, you burnt down your house. But in health care, it's interesting. In health care, you can burn down your house, and we say it's a $100 deductible, the co-insurance. In fact, we reward not doing things right. Don't wear a helmet when, you wear a when you're driving a motorcycle? No problem. $100 deductible. Use drugs, abuse alcohol? No problem. $100 deductible. 25% of our society is obese? No problem. It's $100 deductible. Now the reason why I say that is, in Medicaid, as reported in Business Week a number of months ago, the Medicaid is looking at this and saying, this is not right. We're not sponsoring the kind of activity that creates a healthy society because we reward those people who make the wrong decisions. And they're starting to change Medicaid so that Medicaid doesn't do this anymore. It's in five states, Pennsylvania being one, Florida being another, and I don't know the other three. My point is, if we don't start grabbing on these expenses and trying to drive down these costs and change what the plans are, 
on the health insurance plan and everything else in the town and in my business and in your businesses if you have businesses you're going to get eaten up by this economy this year 133 banks have gone out of business last year we thought there was the worst was only 34 this year we just signed the Senate just extended the debt to 14 trillion dollars multiply 5% times 14 trillion 20 year bonds went from a high of 125 dollars back in 08, now down to 89, the projected down to 80. That's a 40% reduction. That means we have to raise that much more money to get those bonds. The state of Maine comes to us and says, we're surprised. We didn't get $400 million of income, which we thought we were going to get. You've got to be kidding me. We have 17% unemployment. This has got a long way from being resolved. If this town and all the other towns don't take a hold of this and start changing what we're doing and renegotiating contracts, I know it's in Mike's budget that he, uh, that he passed off for this coming year. Civil employees are going to get a 2% pay raise. I someone's told he's going to get a 25% pay reduction by, for all the people in this company. So pay raises are not the norm today. If we want to keep our people, we have to restructure their compensation program and their benefit program so we can afford to keep them. And that's more important. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. Town Manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chairman Ed. <laughs> Chair Ed. <laughs> I'll try to get it straight. Uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, the contribution of an anonymous citizen who provided a wreath at uh, Portland Headlight. It was dedicated last Friday. I know. Uh, Penny, I believe, went and uh, Sarah, Sarah? Uh, went to the ceremony and uh, just very, very happy that that occurred uh, at no expense to the town and want to thank the Coast Guard. The other thing, I, I did want to respond uh, very quickly uh, to what uh, Mr. Prince said. The, my projection showed what a 2% uh, pay increase would have as an effect on the budget. Uh, the council nor I have told any employees, we haven't told any employees that there's going to be 2% increases. And just in case any of them are watching, uh, I, I wouldn't want to, for them to think that that's in the cards at this point, uh, because that was just what the projection showed as a possibility in terms of the overall uh, projection of the community. So uh, the council has not had any discussions yet uh, at all on what percentage increases, if any, might be available. Uh, two employees this coming year. So, thank okay, you. thank you. Review of the minutes of the meeting held November 9th. Do I hear a motion? David? I move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Uh, Chair. I, but I, oh, go ahead. I have a question. If you weren't a member of the council, can you vote on a set of minutes that are reported? Yes. You can. It's yes. a ministerial responsibility. Just need to know. Okay. Different in different quarters. Yeah. Councilor Sherman. I just had uh, one suggested revision on page three. It appeared to me that maybe things got a little out of order. Um, the section that says Chairman Rowe opened the item to public comments, and then we have comments from three individuals. I also think that Brian Rayback was part of those of that group that spoke. Um, and then the motion then should come after the, the listing of the, the people who spoke at the public hearing. So I think it's just sort of an order thing in the minutes. Uh, and it's sort I, of hard to explain. But I, I seem to recall that there were public comments <coughs> after the motion, which was unusual. I do recall oh, that it okay. That so we did. Okay, you're right, actually. Chairman now that, Rowe had, had right. allowed comments, which and that's is why I'm, usually uh, not. And that's why. Council rules. Hence my confusion. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. I have no other comments. That was confusing. Okay. Any other changes, corrections, or comments? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number two adoption of the town council rules. Do I hear a motion? I move that we adopt the town council rules. 
Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number three, appointment of the Finance Committee and the Finance Committee Chair. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll move that uh, Sarah Lennon be Finance Chair. I'll second that. And that the Council as a whole serves as a Finance Chair, Sorry. as a Finance Committee? Yes. Just for the edification yep. of the public. Okay, um, there was second. a second. second. Okay, any comments, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> I'll do my best. I know you will. Item number four, appointment of an ordinance committee and chair. I move that uh, David Sherman be appointed as chairman of the ordinance committee and Frank Ravenelli and Jim Walsh serve as members. Second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Um, item number five, appointment of an appointments committee and chair. Is there a motion? Councilor Sherman. I move for the appointment of Penelope Jordan as chair of the appointments committee and Sarah Lennon and Jessica Sullivan as members of the appointments committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Item number six, appointment of representatives to the EcoMaine Board of Directors. Is there a motion? I move that Penny Jordan and Mike McGovern are uh, representatives to the EcoMaine Board of Directors for this year. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Item number seven, appointment of representative to the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee. Is there a motion? Jessica? I'll make a motion. To appoint uh, James Walsh as the representative to the, to the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Item number eight, appointment of a representative and an alternate to the Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly. Is there a motion? Councilor Sherman. I move for the appointment of Sarah Lennon as a representative <laughs> and Frank Governale as the alternate to the Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. Item number nine, appointment of a representative to the PACS Policy Committee, and that's the Portland Area Comprehensive Transportation, what's the F? Study. Study Policy Committee. Is there a motion? Sarah? I move that Town Manager Michael McGovern is appointed as the representative to the PACS Policy Committee. I second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you, it's unanimous. Item number 10, appointment of a representative to the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Is there a motion? David? I move for the appointment of Jessica Sullivan as the representative to the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Item number 11, representatives to the various ad hoc municipal committees. Is there a motion? Sarah? I move that the representatives to the ad hoc municipal committees are as follows. Sarah Lennon to the Alternative Energy Committee, Penny Jordan for the Municipal Operations Review Committee, Dave Sh David Sherman for the, again, for the Municipal Operations Review Committee, Penny Jordan for the Health Insurance Review Committee. James Walsh uh, will continue as a member of the House Insurance Review Committee, having originally been appointed as a citizen representative. 
Thank you. Is there a second? A second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Item number 12, appointments <coughs> committee recommendations. Uh, Councillor Jordan is the new chair of appointments. Would you like to bring us up to date on this? Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much to everybody who uh, submitted applications for the various boards and commissions. Um, I will tell you that the, um, the list of candidates, the talent in that pool was phenomenal. If uh, any of you would like to work at Jordan's Farm, you're more than welcome to be there because it was definitely, definitely a strong team of people. Um, I can go through the list of people who are uh, recommended for appointment to the various uh, boards and commissions, if you're ready. Are you ready? Okay. <clears throat> Board of Assessment Review, Christopher C. Lynch. Arts Commission, Aaron Mosier, Douglas McFad, Tina Harnden, Wendy Seltzer. Community Services Advisory Commission, Stephanie Carver. Conservation Commission, Dina DeSena, Marty Blair. Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Richard Dunham, Daniel Chase. The Personnel Appeals Board has still not been determined. Planning Board, Victoria Violent, Liza Quinn, Betsy Richardson. Recycling Committee, Mary Brock, Sharon Roberts. Riverside Memorial Cemetery Trustees, Jesse Timberlake. Thomas Memorial Library Trustees, Jennifer Healy, Michael Moore, not the producer, but Michael Moore, Nancy O'Sullivan. Zoning Board of Appeals, Thomas Kinley, Peter Howe, David Johnson. Fair Hearing Officer, Michael Valancourt. And would you like to make the motion? I would like to make a motion that all, all, all people listed uh, should be approved for the various committees identified. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, I would just like to echo uh, Penny's comments. I was part of the appointments committee that interviewed these folks, and Kate Elizabeth was in the enviable position of having many more applicants, very well qualified applicants, than we had open slots. And I want to thank everybody who applied, whether they uh, were able to be fitted into a position or not. Um, if you were not, then don't give up. Try again, because we have many people serving on current boards and commissions who didn't get in on their first try. And it just shows what a great community we have, that we have so many volunteers in this community. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And thank you, Penny. Item number 13, acceptance of 2009 gifts and donations. Does anybody want to make a, do you, Michael or Deborah, do you want to introduce this at all? Deborah? Thank you very much. Each year at this time, we bring forward to the town council a list, a list of uh, monetary and in-kind donations that are provided to the town for the various um, departments, fire department, police, uh, Fort Williams, library, uh, Portland Headlight. Uh, so it would be in order for you this evening to uh, accept these donations as presented. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? David? I move that we accept these very generous donations. Is there a, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. I'd just like to ask uh, uh, Deborah, uh, how do we acknowledge these people with their, gen for their generous donations? To Generally it's done by department. For instance, if something goes to the library, they acknowledge it, um, and so forth, police and fire, 
We, okay. we do it by department. With a letter? Or I, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that's done. Okay, I'm just curious if it was done by the manager or by Usually it's the done by department. Okay, great. Right, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 14, which has to do with post construction stormwater management ordinances. Um, would our ordinance chair like to say anything about this or make a motion? Uh, <laughs> all I can really say about this is the information that we have in the packet, but we have received tonight a draft ordinance that would bring the town of Cape Elizabeth into compliance with the main DEP protections, MS4 general permit, and into compliance with the Federal Clean Water Act. And uh, in light of that, I would move that we refer this proposed stormwater management ordinance to the Ordinance Committee for consideration. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, David. <coughs> Next is item 15, which is an update on the 2008 bond. Would the manager like to introduce this? Yes, thank you, Ann. Uh, back in 2007, I think it actually was, the town council authorized a bond where the monies were actually borrowed in 2008. Uh, the amount that was borrowed was $2,088,000. Uh, as of the update the council received about a week ago, we had expended uh, nearly $1.6 million, leaving a balance of about half a million dollars uh, still to be spent. Uh, of that half million dollars, uh, about half of it has actually been committed, and about half of it, $262,965, uh, has not been committed. Uh, earlier, all of the monies were committed, uh, particularly for some, some town center uh, sidewalks and stormwater improvements, but as the recession hit, the town council had said, let's relook at this, see if perhaps there are some higher priority items that, that it ought to be spent on. Uh, in addition, I should mention the school department also had 461200 as part of the bond, and they had <coughs> spent, uh, as of a week or two ago, all but uh, about 5600 of that. Uh, the, of the monies that were authorized to be spent and haven't been spent yet, the 262965 what I'd like to do is recommend that $52,000 of the unallocated amount be provided uh, to be matching funds for hoped for uh, stimulus funds uh, that we've applied for to the main PUC under, under the stimulus program. Uh, the Alternative Energy Committee recommended to us uh, some light Im lighting improvements in the high school, the middle school, the elementary school, and the community center. Uh, and the payback period, if these are installed, are 2.4 years. Uh, the 15-year savings is 846000 so in, in my view, it would be well worth the investment of $52,000 in the, the bond remaining funds uh, because this, this does have such a, an immediate payback and because it would be leveraging uh, these federal funds as well. It's not a sure thing that we're going to receive the grant, uh, but we're reasonably optimistic, and uh, this would enable us to, to go ahead and get the project done and start to reap the savings uh, uh, that ultimately will save the school department and the taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth uh, in, in the next uh, 15 years, as I said, $846,000. Okay, thank you. So your recommendation is? To allocate $52,000 from the 2008 bond uh, for energy savings uh, at the schools and community center. Okay. And even if we didn't get the grant, we would use these monies to, uh, to do energy savings. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mike before we hear a motion? Yes. Would you, would you repeat, if, if we didn't get the grant, tell, tell If we do not get the grant, we would begin the work at the high school, elementary school, middle school, and community center making these lighting improvements uh, because the payback is 2.4 years, and it just seems to make so much sense to, to get it done. And is this light bulbs, 
LED stuff? What? It's it's lead, it's uh, changing out of a lot of the uh, lighting fixtures for much more energy efficient units. Mike, uh, if I, the chief, yes. I could ask. Um, you've got a um, we had a we had a uh, paper in here that indicated when these things were going to be done. It was actually a uh, I guess September 2010 would be the last component of the project. Yeah. Uh, is there a is there a tailored back uh, sort of work plan? For just the fifty-two thousand, or is that plan that's in here for the entire amount, including the the uh, grant? The plan is for the entire amount, and you know, I, I should never say things publicly, but I'm really optimistic. We, you know, this payback. I just can't imagine us not getting this grant unless, okay. you know, things are totally biased against Cape Elizabeth and cities to the north. Well, I just wonder if you're only going to have the fifty-two thousand and you don't get the grant. Is there a low-hanging fruit program here that says these are the projects that are number one as opposed to the four projects that are laid out in the plan? In, in a later agenda item, what I'm proposing to do is to take the balance of the bond funds and to have it go into the budget process competitively looking at all of our needs and uh, okay. evaluating priorities. Okay. Dave, you have a question? I, uh, Jim actually got to the issue that I was wanting to ask about. Okay. Any other questions for Mike? Do I hear a motion? Tara. I move that $52,000 of the unallocated amount of the bond um, be allocated for energy savings and lighting updates at the high school, middle school, elementary school, and the community center. Is there a second? Frank? Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, item number 16 is a related item. It has to do with the grant application to the main PUC for $85,000 in stimulus funds for an energy efficient community block grant. Mike? It, just briefly, th this is what I was just talking about on the earlier issue. This is to actually apply for the grant. And, and, it, and I should, but this is a place to also mention in addition to the energy savings, there's a, there's a reduction in CO2 emissions of 6.5 million pounds over the 15 year life cycle. And there's also a savings in, of kilowatt hours of 4.2 million kilowatt hours and 95,836,000 annual BTUs being saved. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's considerable amount of environmental enhancement as well. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> the, and this was the top priority of the Alternative Energy Committee, and all of this was reviewed by them. Okay. Unfortunately, the timing is I didn't get their, their recommendation uh, until just a little bit before the grant application needed to be filed. It, uh, so, you know, usually we try to bring these things to the council earlier. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion? Dave? I move that we approve uh, the grant application in the amount of $85,000 to the Maine Public Utilities Commission for an American Recovery and Reinvestment Act grant for lighting updates within the school buildings and the community center. Second. Second. Any discussion? Sarah. I just, can I just briefly, again, thank the Alternative Energy Committee for all the work they've done. It's, it's been great, and they've done so much work, and I'm so glad a little piece of this is moving forward, and I expect that soon we'll have their full report. So thank you, Alternative Energy out there. Thank you, and thank you, Sarah, because you're part of that committee, so thank you. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Great, thank you. <coughs> Item number... 17, an update on the refinancing of the 1998 and 1999 bonds. Mike? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ann. Uh, back in October, the town refinanced bonds. This, is, this came to the town council once earlier. At, at, uh, I forget which month. It was probably August uh, when you authorized the ref refinancing of these bonds. And one of the bonds, actually, this is the second time it's been refinanced. Uh, they were, they were all callable bonds, and the, the big project that was done in the early 90s to uh, renovate the middle and elementary school and to put the connector in, uh, those are being refinanced a second time. And as a result of this refinancing, uh, 
over the life of the bonds, which continues until uh, FY 2020, uh, the school department savings is about 232,000. The municipal for municipal projects uh, debt service paid for the municipal budget, the savings is a little over half a million for a total savings of $741,000 uh, over the life of the bonds. What's particularly good news is that most of the savings occurs uh, up front in the next few years uh, with the budget challenges that are before us. Uh, in the current year budget, the savings is 225000 almost. It's uh, 133000 next year and 106000 uh, the year after. So uh, quite a bit of the savings is during the, the first three years. Uh, as part of this, uh, the way the, the bidders structure the, the bonds, they bid different ways, there's something called a premium. And the premium is, 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 is just a way of pricing the bonds. It's, there's not any magic to it. But what, what it does result of extra money coming back to us up front the first year. That's one reason the, the first year savings is, is so much. Uh, I asked Joe Katara, our financial advisor, to estimate based on the size of the bond and other factors. And I don't know what all the factors are used are, but, but anyway, I had no reason to doubt his numbers. Uh, the bid premium for the school portion came out at 73110 for the municipal portion of 71853 the, the school department in its budget automatically saves uh, about 31000 I believe is the number, uh, without the council taking any action. However, for the, since this money is actually being given to the school department, I believe the council ought to authorize the $73,000 that was the premium portion of this to go to the school department so that it's in essence a, an increase in the amount you're authorizing to be given to them. Uh, someone had asked me, well, who's paying the, the expense of the cost of issuance? The cost of the issuance was $41,834, and that is being uh, assumed as part of the municipal budget. That included the financial advisor's fee of about $17,000, uh, the rating services, Standard and Poor's and Moody's uh, together uh, were about 16000 and PSAT with our bond council was $8,934.62. Uh, but anyway, under this scenario, the, the municipal budget is assuming those. Uh, the school savings, once they get the premium of 73000 would be 105000 The municipal is 118000 So, you know, it, it strikes me as a reasonable division and, uh, you know, this was really unexpected savings when the budget was put together last year. We didn't expect the 224,000 savings. So it's, when we have other issues that have gone on, it, it's nice that there's been a, a pe one piece of good news. So I would uh, recommend the council credit the school department the $73,110.35 premium. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike? Frank? Mike, do you know what the interest rates are on these new bonds, and are they issued as callable bonds? The, they are issued as callable. The true interest cost is 1.68 percent, mm -hmm. with an average life of 4.6 years, maybe. Okay. I could be a little off on that decimal point. And does this extinguish basically the opportunity that exists for refinancing for both the schools and the town? This, these are all of the bonds that are currently callable. We, we have exercised our options. Any other questions for Mike? I, Penny. Mike, are there any restrictions on what type of ex, you know, expenses these dollars can be used for? Because I know some bonds are targeted toward like capital infrastructure kind of things. And yeah. Would that this be restricted in any way? In, in this instance, the premiums can be used for whatever purpose we want. Okay. The, the rest of the dollars, the 741000 that's just monies that are not going to have to be budgeted. There's no money there yet. It just uh, well, except for this year's money, uh, the monies that have not yet been appropriated. Okay. Any other questions, Frank? And uh, the municipal budget had not um, factored in these savings, correct? So that's correct. Right. Anything else? I just yes. I just wanted to clarify that the the bond refinancing. Um, this was all done by you, Mike through the town. There, there, so in other words, there, there are, the school department does not do any of its own bonds, is that correct? The, yeah, or the, do they? 
Any, any borrowing done by the town of Cape Elizabeth for any project at any time is always done by the authority of the town council on the municipal, yeah. The, the school department does not have independent authority to borrow money. Okay. Anything else? Okay, do we hear a motion? Sarah. Uh, I move the town council <coughs> credit the school department the $73,110.35 premium from the bond. Is there a second? I second that. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, I just want to, uh, on behalf of the council, thank not only Joe Katara, our financial um, advisor, but especially thank Mike McGovern for all his efforts on this. Uh, Single-handedly, he has managed to save or to get us over $200,000, us, the town, over $200,000 through his own efforts, his own performance. And uh, I think that's, that's great, and I want to thank him because it isn't often that I run into somebody who can single-handedly find $200,000. So. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you very much. The town is lucky to have an experienced manager who uh, has a considerable financial acumen. So, uh, Chair, is the, Michael, is the, was there a timing issue on this too, I understood? The 22-year cycle? Is that you, you happened to hit it? Oh, I, oh, you mean for the, the bar? Yeah, the, it, we were lucky. The, we looked at this, you know, beginning last summer, and the week we hit was, I think, the, the Interest rates were at a 42-year low that particular week. We, but that was luck. It was not. Uh, yes. That was luck. But you had, they had the wheels in motion, though. So we had well, the wheels in that's motion. The point. That's the point. If Mike hadn't stepped up and done this, nobody else was doing it. So we would have gone cruising along obliviously. But I think, you know, what the real important part of this, we reduced our interest costs by about two-thirds, yeah. uh, which is, that's, you know, just really positive. You know, with, with all the bad things about the economy, occasionally there are things you can do in a tough economy that uh, that can work to some good. If you're on, good. if you're on top of things. So, thank you. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is item number 18: a report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Dan Chase is here from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Would you like to say something about this? Dan Chase, 26 Stony Brook Road. Well, I didn't really come in with anything to say. Just uh, thought I'd be here to answer some questions if there were any, but uh, okay. hopefully it's I've tried to include everything in the report. So it's hopefully it's all there for you. Okay. Great. Well, I want to thank you and the rest of the advisory commission for your work on this, and uh, the council will be making some decisions on these things. So, um, Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to mention, Anne, the council has a workshop scheduled yes. that there's no agenda yet for, and maybe this is something you'd like to utilize that evening for with some I think that's an excellent fashion. idea. Which, what's the date of that workshop? January 4th. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yes. I was going to make a motion. Make a motion then. Go ahead. Uh, I move that we acknowledge receipt uh, of the report of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission with gratitude for all of the hard work that went into that. We really do appreciate it. And that we consider it's the committee's re recommendations in early 2010 and specifically schedule the recommendations of the committee uh, for discussion at the upcoming workshop of the Council on January 4th, 2010. Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any questions, discussion? And just, mm -hmm. I worded January 4th carefully of, you know, it's, the Council's had some discussion within its goals of also changing processes and, you know, maybe between now and January 4th, you know, I think it's just important to leave that night open. You, you might not want to be so specific as to say a workshop. I, I'd be happy to uh, amend. amend my motion that we schedule it for uh, the uh, a workshop in 2010 at to the earliest scheduled. practicable date. 
okay. to be scheduled. To be scheduled. Okay. Is that okay, that amendment okay with the second? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Okay, item number 19, the Municipal Infrastructure Stewardship Plan, which runs the 10-year period 2011 to 2021. Mike? Yes, thank you, Anne. For anyone that looked at this online, you might have seen the, the, the titles of the attachments as Capital Improvement Plan, uh, because that's what we always used to call something that was similar to this. Uh, however, when putting this together this year, we used a much different format. We really did an analysis of everything we have in terms of buildings, in terms of uh, equipment, uh, our roads, our infrastructure. Everything in it is, is capital is looked at. When I say capitalized, the, that's not really the proper term. It's uh, depreciated, although we don't do it in a financial sense, uh, over the uh, generally 17 years for most pieces of equipment, 17 years for the paving of roads. It was just a coincidence it was the same. But different pieces of equipment are have a, have, a, have a different useful life. We then looked at, you know, what do we need to invest if we were simply to replace everything on, on that time frame. And it came out that right now we're investing in what we call the capital improvement portion of our budget, about $400,000 a year. And it shows, you know, just to keep what we have, to keep it maintained, uh, would uh, cost three and a half to four times that each year. So, you know, a number of things have to give. Either we, you know, totally re-engineer so we, we're not buying certain pieces of equipment anymore. Uh, we have less property to maintain, perhaps. Uh, we don't, or well, we don't take care of our infrastructure. Uh, or we look at a gradual increase of the amounts that we're spending each year on, on capital improvements. Certainly, we, we, the 400000 is probably the lowest we've spent in the last 25 years on capital improvements. Uh, and we also, there's a suggestion here that maybe in 2016, the things that have a fairly long life cycle, that we look at, we look at another bond, uh, 2.5 million. Uh, but what, what it does show, this this plan as outlined showed, is you know we we have a lot of uh, equipment that is going to be getting old. We have a lot of roads that are going to deteriorate, and uh, it's going to be very challenging to maintain them. And there's really no money, you know, beyond with more taxes and cre increases or throwing more money into the pool or grants or some other way to do actual improvements above and beyond, uh, you know, what, what folks might like to do. You know, it's, this is a situation where not just in for e a year or two, it's, it's been a chronic problem in Cape Elizabeth in terms of the extent to which we, we're, we're making investments. Uh, you know, I'm, in this plan, I'm not suggesting, you know, specific things that are going to be funded in next year's budget. I think we still need to go through a process of getting all the requests in and evaluating them. But, you know, this is, I think it really is a, a stewardship uh, analysis of, uh, of what's out there. And, you know, for anyone who's interested, it is online. You can see every piece of equipment we own, every piece of road, how, how long it is, when it was last uh, paved. And every single road is analyzed that if we, if we were to pave it today, how much it would cost to pave. Uh, or if we paved one seventeenth of each road, since uh, you know it has to be done every seventeen years, what you ought to be spending every year in a road. So, for you know, number of techies, it's interesting. Uh, but it also, you know, it, it doesn't look at inflation. It doesn't look at some of the other issues that we need to look at. Uh, so it, it definitely has some limitations. But uh, I would recommend the council uh, acknowledge receipt of it. Uh, as a planning document, and what that means is you have it, and it doesn't mean anything beyond that. It's, you're not committing to, uh, to anything. Thank you, Mike. Is there a motion? Sarah. I move we acknowledge the receipt of the Municipal Infrastructure Stewardship Plan from 2011 to 2021 report and consider its recommendation in future budgets. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Frank. Any discussion? Yes. Just a question, yes. Michael. Um, as you look at uh, similar towns, do they look at the capital equipment or the 
roads in the same way? Is there a standard sort of best in class, best approach that's utilized across municipalities? Not really. So there's no, no. real sort of? No. Okay. I've got, I've, you know, years and years ago, I went to workshops, seminars on how to do capital improvement planning. But, you know, a lot of it was, there were different times. Sure. And, you know, I think every business today, including the town as a business, just needs to look at, you know, how we're going to keep the buildings up and just things going as they are. And I don't know anyone who's done anything to the extent that we have of really analyzing what you own and what you ought to be investing in it on an annualized basis and putting it all together in one package. Uh, you know, I, I think there's reasons probably they don't do it. It's scary when you, when you look at the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. So Mike, as we look at this and consider it, part of our consideration should, uh, it's a question, uh, so I'll pose it as a statement, yeah. should also be to consider whether or not some of these things that we do and we have to pay for the equipment perhaps should be better done outsourced, like street creek street cleaning uh, where we own a piece of equipment that does it perhaps in the future we decide yeah. that rather than spending the capital yeah. it would be more effective yeah. to so we should think, consider the whole thing in that respect yeah uh, absolutely frank when you when you look at these numbers i'm suggesting we spend a hundred thousand more each year on capital improvements even if you do that and even if you throw in a 2.5 million dollar bond you're still two and a half million dollars short which really begs the issue you gotta this is not sustainable Right. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We are now at the second opportunity for citizen discussion or questions on items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? Before you adjourned, I did want to acknowledge that Rick Liberty is working with us tonight along with Lillian in the booth. He's a new uh, cable producer for us, and this is his first meeting, so I wanted to welcome him. Thank you. Uh, I, I see no citizens approaching the podium, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.